people mention Danville, or, or when I think about it, it's, it's always a warm spot for me. You know, that kind of community-centered, family-centered background it kind of laid the foundation for where my work came from. You know, I think my moral background and that kind of spine that walks down the middle of all my work and my approach to it comes from how I was raised at Danville. I'm one of 11, and seven of those 11 are, are women. I'm always very proud to say that I was raised by women. Those women include those seven sisters and my mother and all my aunts who all live within a, a mile. Those women gave me confidence to, when I started writing in persona voices, it was easy to include the voices of women. If I wrote the wrong voices, my sisters would tell me immediately if it was wrong. So having their criticism and being able to pass their kind of litmus test always gave me enough confidence to, to walk in that space. And I think that space gave me permission to write in other voices. If people ask me to sum up my own work, I would say that it easily you know, can be summed up as social justice, work about identity, place, family, and history. And all of that comes from not just where I was raised, but who raised me. My mother was a Pentecostal minister for 22 years. She admittedly said she was trying to raise me as another minister. As a young person, I resisted that notion. But at the same time, she came to one of my first poetry readings and she looked at how people were responding to what I was reading. And she said, that I do. And I didn't realize or I didn't think about what I did as a poet, as a ministry. But she saw very clearly that it was, it was very parallel to what she wanted or what she thought was important. There had been a big literary event at the Opera House. What had been originally billed as featuring great writers of Appalachia, which just changed to something else. He took Appalachia out of the title. I was puzzled by the need to take Appalachia out of the title. So I opened my dictionary in 1991, and the dictionary said, Appalachians are the white residents of the mountainous regions of Appalachia. And I was stunned that it was that exclusive. And I thought about, well, what are the people who are not white who live in the same space? And that troubled me. When I go to the page, I'm asking, my poet self a question, trying to interrogate or weave my way back through some kind of truth. The word Afrolatcha just came out. That gave birth to a word that eventually made its way to the cover of my first book, Afrolatcha. One of my most recent books, a children's book, A is for Afrolatcha, the Afrolatcha poets, individuals around the country who call themselves Cuba Latchins and Asia Latchins. And I think our word gave people permission to really look at who lived in the space and force a redefinition of it. And I think it's done a lot to not just force the world to see Appalachia as a different space, but to see it more accurately and more honestly. And I think it's been, it's been better for the region. Love letter to the world always makes me smile when I think about it. To know that it still lives in so many ways that you could drive down Short Street in Lexington and look up at the corner of the building and five stories tall, there's an excerpt from the poem on the side of the building, Unlearned Fear and Hate. And it reminds us, you know, how to make this a more peaceful, a more beautiful, a more whole communal space, which is the thing that drives it back to the center of my work, which is being in my mother's skirt. Back in 2013, I opened a letter from the governor, but inside it, it was congratulations, you know, you're the next poet laureate. I did nothing for the first day. I just kept reading it over and over again. It felt more literary. You know, I'd rather not have gotten a text or a phone call that this official letter with an official stamp and stationery on it, you know, from the governor just felt right somehow. Then when Governor Bashir showed up and was shaking hands and taking pictures with my siblings who were over the moon, uh, they'd never been in Franklin, never been in the Rotunda. So it was a really great day for all of us. When I think about art, and writing. I was a visual artist first. I was a fan of comic books, so I started writing and drawing my own comic books. I didn't think about it as creative writing at the time. I just thought about a cheap way to have a new book and to tell my own story. I came back to art again, and I've added it to the things I'm trying to do over the course of a year. I'm making woodwork again, I'm painting. So I think the writer and the visual artist are, are not trying to work separately. You know, literature is a big deal, and to be in a space where literature is a big deal and to be recognize makes my mother smile and, and she's on the other side but i know you know she's looking again and saying that'll do that'll do
us.